Well, welcome to Church Online. We are so glad that you've joined us here on this live stream on YouTube or Facebook. Make sure that you click the subscribe button on YouTube and also hit that notification button so you can stay updated with everything happening in the life of City Edge Church. And also, make sure you like our Facebook page. And you know what? Maybe even give us a thumbs up right now. We can't wait for our service here today. If you'd love to connect with us, we'd love to connect with you. And our Connect Card is the greatest way in which you can stay connected in the life of City Edge Church over this period. Why don't you go to our website, cityedge.church. If you type that in, they'll go straight to our website and you can fill out a Connect Card today. Throughout today's online service, why don't you message in some of your prayer needs? Why don't you comment down below what God is doing in your life? We'd also love to know where you're watching this live stream from today. Right now, we're about to worship God together. Wherever you're watching this live stream, can I encourage you to lean in because God has got something for you. Come on, church, let's worship together.
I'm going to worship him now. Our God is faithful. His promises are yes and amen. We're going to sing about that.
hold to you, God. You never fail. In this moment, City Edge, this morning, we are going to believe for miracles. And uh, we are a church that believes that God can do miracles. He can do more than we could ever ask, imagine, or dream. And I love that we have this moment right now because God isn't just interested in filling a building. He's interested in filling a people. And no matter where you are right now, living room, home or on the phone, I want to let you know that God wants to move in your life right now. So as a sign, a sign of faith to God to say, God, it doesn't matter where I am in the world. As a sign of God, if you're believing for a miracle right now, all I ask is would you stretch out your hands to heaven and say, Jesus, today, 
God, I want you to move on my life. And right now, we're going to pray in faith that God's doing a miracle in your life. Come on, let's pray together. If there's someone around your home, why don't they lay hands on you as we pray? God, we pray together, Jesus, that there is miracles happening in this place. For God, for every person needing a miracle. God, we know that you're not just interested to fill buildings. God, you're interested in moving on hearts and lives. And we pray miracles by the power, hand, and power of Jesus. We thank you, God. Would you move right now in Jesus' name? Amen and amen and amen. Wonderful. Well, uh, we are so excited to continue with our online service for this morning. And uh, whether you're on an aeroplane, I think they have aeroplane mode for reasons. So I don't think anyone could be watching it there. But whether you're at home, on the phone, or wherever you are, we are so excited that we can bring church to you. And uh, we're so excited for everything. We've got a word in store in season uh, for City Edge Church. And whether you're uh, from Harvest, uh, whether you're from uh, here, our location, Calandra, or whether you're just checking us, we are so glad that you've made it onto this live stream right now. But we are going to come around a time of giving, come around a time of generosity. And I'd love to encourage you from Psalm 24 today. In Psalm 24, it says this, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For He has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. I love what the writer of Psalm 24 directs us to instantly. They say this, the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. And not just that, but we are the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. Everything belongs to the Lord. And then he goes on to talk about this idea that God has founded the earth, or as I like to say, dirt, on water. Now, I'm definitely not a gardener. If you know me very well, I am. not intentionally a plant killer, but it just kind of happens. I'm sorry. And I try to do my best. But what I've found is that when water meets dirt or water meets a plant, things begin to grow. And I love that the writer of this says that he founded the earth on water because God in his nature, in his DNA, is a God that brings life. He is a God that brings life. And how much more as a believer of Jesus, how much more as the kingdom of God serving the King can we now partake with His DNA, with His image to like Him be a source of water to the plants all around us to bring life and abundance all around. And what I really see this being is God brings the water so that there would be abundance and life all around. And we too can bring abundance by our generosity and our giving to see the kingdom of God on this earth as it is in heaven. We actually have a holy, a sacred moment right now that as we give, I want us to look at it as if we're sowing water and seeing the kingdom of God flourish on the earth. Can we visualize that? That this moment right now isn't just a moment of transaction, like having a transaction of giving a little bit of money to the church. It's not like that. It's like us seeing the kingdom of God on earth because we're producing water to the dirt and it will grow. So whether you're in Innisfail, whether you're from Caloundra, whether you are just streaming online right now, the services and different ways that you can give will be on the screen right now. And we encourage you, let's take this as a faith moment right now to sow into the kingdom of God. Hey, as we hold this generosity in our hearts, why don't we pray together? Jesus, we believe that, Lord, we're sowing seeds into the kingdom. That, Lord, we're not just sowing seeds, but we're also watering for the future. And we're watering to see the kingdom of God on the earth. And we believe right now, however we decide to give in this moment, Lord, we want to be partakers of your DNA, your nature, and be these generous people. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Well, City Edge Church, we are going to come around a time of the Word. And I couldn't be more excited that wherever you're listening from, wherever you are right now, we're going to let something in season speak to our soul, our hearts. 
we're going to be encouraged by the man of God and our senior pastor. So wherever you are, living room, room, aeroplane, would you stand to your feet as we honour the man and the word of God right now. It's great. So good. Well, welcome to everyone streaming in online to our Caloundra Church and our Innisfail Church. It's just so great to be with you now. And uh, I'm just excited about uh, the time that we can have together now in this moment, wherever you are, as Pastor Nick just shared. And uh, I love that uh, as the church, uh, I personally just absolutely love the gathered church. You know, in Acts, it talks about the church that met from house to house and in the synagogue or the temple. And uh, so I love the, the, the gathering of the wide church together and also home to home and house to house as well. So in this season now, uh, yes, we are doing church online. It's a lot different than usual, but we look forward to the day we can come back together uh, as a church and, and worship together as one. And uh, But I love the fact that in this time, it's so important uh, that we remain engaged and uh, we remain connected as well. Uh, We we just want to let you know, uh, while we are able, unless it does change, uh, we're still going to be running our life groups. Our life groups are still there. Your life group leader is going to be connected with you there as well. And if you're not in a life group, hey, find out more. The details will come to you on the screen as well. But I just want to let you know that it's up to us, isn't it, to remain engaged. It's up to us to come in online uh, at the time together uh, and also be a part of life groups uh, and also just take the time to connect and, and talk with others and, and really encourage each other in this particular season. You know, I just know that God is on the throne. He is sovereign and He has so much in store for us and He is in control during this season right now. And I wanted to take this moment as well just to thank everybody uh, for last Sunday in the Caloundra location uh, for being a part of the Miracle Offering. I just want to let you know that we raised and pledged $132,000. And uh, I just want to thank you for being a part of that. And I know that there are more people that want to be a part of that that were away for the weekend or, or weren't able to be a part of it then. But you can still be a part of the Miracle Offering. And for our Innisfail location, I know that we were meant to do our Miracle Offering today. And, uh, and because of all the circumstances, I couldn't be with you. Uh, but I want to encourage you as well. If you would like to be a part of the Miracle Offering, please check uh, the website. But also you can go into the office midweek and uh, be a part of that. And our team will be able to help you there. And that includes our Caloundra location as well. We'd love to help you with that if you would like to be a part of that. But I have a word that I want to bring to us as a church and for anyone streaming in online right now. And you know, I want to say this in this current season, uh, that, uh, you know, in 2019, in October, God spoke to my heart and gave me the word for 2020. And that was the word sovereignty. And I remember, I was like, God, that's a little different. Uh, You know, that's a little different, that type of word. But I want to tell you now, that makes a world of sense right now, that God is sovereign and God is in control no matter what's going on in our world right now. And uh, I love the scripture he gave me as well. It's out of Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. And, uh, And it says this, For I alone am God. I am God. And there is none like me. Only I can tell the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. And I love this, is that God is saying, I am God. I am God. See, right now, no matter what's going on in our world, it's not like God's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do in this situation? You know, God is not doing that. God is like, it's going to be okay. I'm in control. I'm going to move because He is God. And we can place our trust in Him and know that He has got a plan in all this. And I know this in my prayer this week, and I know it's been up and down emotionally for a lot of people over the last probably two weeks. But I want to say this in my prayer time with with God. God has been just speaking to my heart and telling me that, you know, there is so much that He wants to do across the world. I really believe when this is all said and done on the other side of this, is that there is a great awakening of the church that's going to come. I really believe that as 
Even we know COVID-19, the coronavirus has spread across the world, that God is going to bring an end to that. I really do believe that, and we're going to pray for that. But I also believe in the same way that that spread, the gospel is going to spread across the world. People are going to awaken to Jesus and all that Jesus has done. And I know a great revival is coming for what God wants to bring right across the globe. And uh, I love what it says in 2 Timothy 1, 6-7. And this is the Apostle Paul who wrote first and second Timothy to really encourage Timothy as the pastor of the church in the city of Ephesus. And he says this statement, he says, he says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I got two keys that I want to share with you this morning. And the first is this, is that we are called to stand in His presence. We're called to stand in His presence. You know, as this, as this scripture showed us here, is that perfect love and the love of God, I really believe, is the power that drives out fear. And I'm going to share that scripture in a moment. But I love that when it comes to fear, you need to understand this. Fear is not from God. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Understand that. And a lot of people can be dealing with fear right now in this season. can be fear of what is going to happen. It's the fear of the unknown. The fear of will I be safe? Will I be protected? Will my family be protected? What does it mean for the economy, the global economy of the world? What, 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 you know, a lot can really start to grip our minds and grip our hearts in this season. But I want to tell you right now, fear is not from God. I want you to understand that. And I want you to stand and believe with me today to know that fear is not from God. All right. God has given us a spirit of power and of love. And of a sound mind. That means clear thinking, amen? That's what God's given us, not fear. See, fear is just faith in the wrong things. That's what fear is. Fear is faith in the problem, in the circumstance, in the issue that's going on around us, in our world around us. But I want to tell you, God is saying, hey, look at me. Put your faith and trust in me. I am God. I am in control. Don't fear anything else. Fear me instead. And the fear of the Lord is actually the reverence and trust of God. And as I said, perfect love drives out fear. And that's taken from 1 John 4, 18. It says, love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. That's an incredible scripture, isn't it? And I love what, it, what this means. You know, in the, in the Greek, the actual word perfection is the word teleos, the word teleos. And that, that actually means to be complete. And there's, a, there's a, a word that shortens with that in Greek, and it's the word telos. It means complete, to be in a complete state. And that's incredible, isn't it? It's like a state of being. That's what it's talking about. And it's speaking of the fact that we can actually have a state of being with God. We can come into His perfect love, into His His presence that is perfectly full of faith and hope and life and the love of God because God is the source of love. And when we come into that state of being, that completion in the presence of God, then that is what drives out fear. And we need to understand this. I love this. When when my, my children, I have three children, and my children were babies, now, I remember when they would have, uh, when, when Kate, my wife, when, when they would have some milk, they'd have a drink, okay? And, uh, and, and Kate would sometimes hand the bubba to me afterwards, and I would, I would burp the baby, and then I'd hold Bubby in my arms. And I remember holding him in my arms, and I'll never forget the sight that I would see, because that baby... He, you know, whether it was one of my boys and my little girl, just looking up and just eyes just like happy as Larry. They were just, just so content in that moment. Man, I've just had a feed of milk. I've been burped and I'm ready to go to sleep. 
This is incredible. And uh, I remember sometimes we used to take photos because they'd, they'd get that baby smile, that kind of little, little grin on the side, and, you know, just start smiling like, ah, oh, yes. And I, I could imagine, I'm thinking, what? as I'm holding them, what are you, what are you thinking right now? Because I can think, in their ears, they're just hearing this, oh, this beautiful music. It's just incredible. They're content. I remember, you know, just on Friday night, uh, you know, we got pizza just supporting one of our local cafes in town. We got pizza and the kids had pizza. They had the best time. And then they had ice cream straight after. And I remember looking at them. They're a little bit more grown up in primary school age now. And they're all sitting on the couch just like when they were babies just going, ah, that was real good. I enjoyed that pizza. And I want to tell you, there is a contentment that comes, a rest, an assurance a trust that comes in the presence of Almighty God. And God invites us into that. And He says, come, come stand in my presence. Come into my presence. See, we've got a lot going on in our world right now. And there's a lot of fear right now. But the Lord invites us to say, hey, don't forget me. Come into my presence. Come and, 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 and sup with me, fellowship with me, so to speak. And I want to encourage you, some of the key ways that we can do that is, hey, don't stop praying in this season. Don't stop spending time, allocated time with God in this season. Don't just have your eyes on social media and, and on YouTube and all these, only when City Edge Church is streaming online. That's when you can, you can be online, i got to tell you. we got a message for you. And, uh, but but there, there can be sometimes you can, you can jump on there and sometimes there's just a lot of fear. You know, my, my son was just going through and, and just streaming a YouTube clip today. And he's like, hey, Dad, what's all this stuff about the coronavirus and COVID-19? It's everywhere. What's that? I had a conversation with him. But I want to tell you that some, not everything out there uh, is the best thing to watch or listen to. I want to let you know, I was, I was reading just something the other day, and they said, man, 50 million Australians could get affected by the virus. I'm like, there isn't 50 million Australians in the world. There isn't 50 million Australians in Australia right now. I mean, not everything is true, okay? There's a lot of escalation. There's a lot of stuff. So find good places where you can find facts. And we need to remain informed. I do understand that and get the help we need. But hey, man, some things are just, they're just pushing the fear, all right? So let's be prayers. Let's pray in this season. Hey, do you remember in January, this is Caloundra and Innisfail location, that we brought out the Pray For First resource. And I want to encourage you, I'm using this resource every day. Every day. There is amazing prayers in here. The tabernacle prayer, the prayer of Jabez. You can pray over your kids, over your family, your marriage. Uh, you can pray and it just guides you. So if you struggle to pray, if you don't know where to start, grab this resource. And uh, if you don't have this resource, you can email us online or messenger. Just send a message to us on, on Facebook. We'll, we'll be able to help you and guide you on how you can get a hold of this particular resource, okay? We just want to help you. The, the next is worship. We need to be worshiping God in this season. Remain in a place where we are, uh, uh, you know, allowing worship music to play in our homes. Uh, have it, uh, you know, uh, playing when you're studying, if you're a uni student or you're a school student. Uh, you know, sometimes at work, you can, you can have worship playing in the background, maybe in your AirPods or whatever. But I want to encourage you, let's not switch off to worship. Stay online with us when we're, when we're doing our online service. Join in with us with worship because worship is key in this season. It gets us into that that state, that state of being in the presence of God. And remember, perfect love, the perfect presence of God around us, that's what drives out fear. And that's why we want to have the presence of God around us. Amen. And the final one is, hey, stay in the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. See, the Word of God is God speaking truth from His mind and His heart into our world. That's what the Word of God does. It guides us in truth. It's like God's, God speaking directly to us through His Word. And I want to encourage you, have the Word of God in your life. Have you've got moments when you've just been watching too much stuff or there's been so much talk at work about this whole situation, then that's the time. Man, you need to get into the Word of God. 
Get the Word of God in there. So open it up. If it's on your, your, your version Bible app on your phone or device, or hey, why not open up your old school Bible? Just dust it off, all right? Open it up and uh, start to read through your Bible and get the Word of God in your life. See, these are three things that are gonna help us in this season, but I wanna say this as well. At the same time, we're called to fellowship, we're called to connection. And even though we, we, we have social distancing and all that stuff going on right now, if we, while we can still be at work and while we can still meet in life groups, hey, there is a power of the gathered church in connection. And as much as we can connect, whether it is online or in personal, I just want to encourage us, let's stay connected together. Let's be praying together. Let's be worshiping together. This is so important in this season. And you know, the second point I want to make today is that we are called to live out His love. Live out His love. Paul said to Timothy, I want you to stir up the gift of God in you. Stir it up. Fan into flame the gift of God in you. Almost like he's talking like, you know, there's a flame of the fire of God and the power of God, the Spirit of God inside of all of us as Christians. And I want to encourage you today. Paul speaks that to us. Why don't we fan into flame the gift of God within us? You know, gifts, how many know they're made to be given? Gifts are made to be given. A gift that gets kept inside or kept to ourselves, it's not being used for what it was meant for. So therefore, if we have gifts that God has given us, God, He he calls us and, and Paul is saying to us, hey, fan into flame. The gift of God within you. You know, I know in this season right now, it's kind of the, the, the narrative or the culture can be, I, isolate yourself, think about your own, think about yourself. And I want to encourage you, I think it's important to look after your own life and your own hygiene and, and your family and kids. That's important. We're called to take care and, and live with good safety. I understand that. But I think there needs to be a great awakening inside of our hearts that we don't just get caught in me, myself and I, but we are here to live out His love no matter what that looks like. See, I I just think it can come into the state of when we will, if you can still go to work, that you go into your workplace and you're saying, man, I'm setting a culture here. I'm coming in with the opposite spirit. We may be full of negativity and fear and all sorts of stuff, but I'm bringing the presence of God with me into this space. It's coming in. Heaven is meeting earth because I'm bringing Jesus with me into this environment. And whether you're at school or you can still meet in your, your lecture or tutorial at uni or whatever that looks like, see, you can bring it into your online space as well. Is it's the way we speak. Sometimes even type it. The way we talk, that, that creates an environment on what we're giving and what we're sowing in this time. And we can shift environments. We can change cultures because we can bring heaven to earth in the way that we're fanning into flame the gift of God, stirring up the gift of God within us to show love. See, sometimes, you know, in, in, a, in a store or you can go into the shopping center and it's kind of like, this was me the other night. I went in there and it's like, I had hardly anything that I needed. It's a little frustrating, all right? When you walk down the toilet paper aisle and there's just none and you see some guy with like six packets in his trolley and it's like, all right, all right, that's okay. God, you're gonna provide. You're gonna look after me, all right? See, it's very easy to get caught up in, 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 in oh, the things I need and you're going to self-preserve. But remember, God is in control. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He'll look after us. Jesus said, I will, God, you know, God will not let His kids go hungry for bread. And what that means is, is that God will look after you. He'll take care of it. We just need to trust Him. And whenever we're getting caught up in, in our mind and, and, oh man, I just got to, you know, what about, and, and even if you are in quarantine right now or you're, you're in isolation at this time, hey, you can fan into flame the gift of God within you. You can still ca- stay connected no matter where you are. So let's be those that show the power of God. That means the presence of God wherever we go. Let's be those that show the love of God wherever we go. That means generosity and our encouragement and our actions 
in, our, in what we do in life. That's showing Jesus wherever we go. Hey, how can you think of something generous that you can do for someone else this week? Hey, let's shift the culture. Let's shift the culture. What can you do to maybe daily say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something encouraging to someone that needs it right now. I'm going to be generous in some situation. Maybe you can pay for someone else's uh, you know, item on the grocery aisle or whatever that may be. Hey, let's be the different spirit. I just love with our vision, we're called to transform cities. That means transform culture wherever we are. And I want to encourage you right now, no matter where you are or what situation you're in, you can flan, fan into flame the gift of God, stir it up within you, and God will show you how you can be generous, how you can show the love of Jesus in this season. Now, as we close this message, it makes me think about Jesus. It makes me think about, you know, as we're coming into this season of Easter, and we got a series that we're going to do some preaching on as well called, you know, called the Crown of Thorns. But I was thinking even today as I'm finishing this message and I'm thinking, Lord, Lord, it was incredible, you know, in those last 12 hours of before you went to the cross. You know, Jesus could have just kind of thought about himself in that season. Thought about himself maybe even in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was in there and he, he knew when the soldiers were coming, he was God. He knew. He could have kind of scurried away and went off somewhere else would have skipped that moment but he didn't he stayed and he kept moving forward and see you know he could have in front of the high priest he could have he could have denied and said oh you know I know the accusations that I'm the Messiah he could have denied that and 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 he probably could have get, gotten let go in that moment but he kept moving forward and he didn't deny it I am the son of God I am the Messiah I am here for a reason for this cause I was born. For this cause I've come into the world. In front of Pontius Pilate, he could have done a miracle. He could have done anything to show that he was God, that he was different. He could have, he could have said so many things in that moment, but he didn't. He allowed himself, like Isaiah 53 says, it was like a lamb led to the cross, led to the slaughter. In that moment, he went willingly for the sake of of humanity. I think even on the cross, when He was on the cross and the soldiers are, are mocking Him and accusing Him and even the criminal beside Him is saying, man, if you are God, then get yourself off this cross. Get yourself down. But He didn't. He remained there. Why? Because of His love for you and me. That's why He did it. He went all the way and he did die at the cross and three days later by the power of God he rose from the dead he rose in victory death where is your sting sickness where is your sting you have no sting anymore I'd say this sin where is your sting Jesus defeated it at the cross he is the king of kings he is the Lord of Lords and I want to say this today no matter where you are right now, you may be sitting in your living room, you may be in a, in a, in a cafe somewhere, you're on a device. It, I want to say in this moment right now, Jesus loves you. He has a plan for your life. He loves you. He has hope for you. He has a future for you. And maybe there's people right now that you're streaming into this service and maybe you don't know God. Maybe you're here in this moment and I just want everyone just to lean in in this moment right now. Maybe you don't know Jesus yourself. I wanna let you know that God knows you and He loves you. The Bible says He knows the count of the number of hairs on your head. It's a little less for me, all right? But God still knows the count. He knows that count. That, that means that He knows everything about you. God wants a relationship with you. And I, lo I know this about my own life is that life is so much better with God than without Him. And I want to encourage you today, if you want to know Jesus for yourself, if you want to pray the prayer to accept Jesus into your heart, I'm going to pray this prayer right now. I'm going to pray it, and I want to encourage you, no matter where you are, I want you just to, just to pray these words with me. If you would like to, you're not made to, but if you would like to accept Jesus into your life, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be anywhere, but you can pray this prayer. And, and I, I know that God will meet you there by His Spirit. 
So let's pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and my past. I accept you today as my Savior and my Lord from this day forward. Jesus, thank you for my salvation. Amen. That is wonderful. Now, I want to encourage you, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe you made a recommitment to to Jesus today, we want to encourage you. There's steps that we're going to let you know a little later on. Uh, But we got we got help for you. We got resources for you. We just know that, hey, don't do this journey alone. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to help you on the journey of next steps, of knowing Jesus and knowing what community with Him is all about. You know, what we're going to do now as we are here online, uh, we're going to have our creative team minister uh, the song, The Blessing. Now, this was written just two weeks ago, and uh, it's by Elevation Worship. And I know there are churches all over the globe right now singing this song as a prophetic declaration, a prophetic declaration to the world, to your life. And I want our team to minister this over you. I want us to to, to sing along with this as well. And uh, it is a blessing to your family, to your life, to your world. And let's speak it to our, our lives, our family, our nation, our world right now. So let's sing this song together. space. 
today for everyone online right now in this moment, people sitting in their living rooms, in a cafe, wherever you are right now, we pray for you. Lord, we pray for the the Sunshine Coast, for Innisfail, for Australia, for our world right now. And Lord, I pray that Lord Jesus, you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords, and I, I break this coronavirus, I declare right now that Lord, by the power of the name of Jesus, I declare there will be healing. And Lord, you will heal our land, you will heal this nation, you will heal the globe. I declare right now in the name of Jesus Christ, that there be wholeness, that there be healing by the blood of Jesus and by the name and victory of Jesus Christ. I declare that you are Lord today. And we thank you, Lord, that you will bring resolve to our nation our world in Jesus name and Lord I thank you let there be blessing upon every life everyone in our churches Lord God everyone online right now let let blessing I just speak it over your world right now I just want you to receive that I want you to receive that right now where you are receive that blessing in the name of Jesus I bless you today the prayer of Jabez oh that you would bless us indeed enlarge our territory that your hand of sovereignty would be with us and you would keep us from harm. I speak that blessing over you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you today for being with us online for our our service. And we just want to say from Pastor Kate and myself, we love you so much. And uh, we're praying for God's blessing over your life. Have a great week this week. Uh, Stay connected. Stay engaged, and we'll keep you posted with more information. Bless you. What an incredible encouragement and word in season for us as the church. 
If you just made that decision to follow Jesus, to start a life with Him, we encourage you, head to our website, cityedge.church, where we can help you take your next step on this amazing life with Christ. To stay updated, make sure that you're on all of our social media platforms. That includes YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. But this week, church, have an incredible week, and we cannot wait to see you next time online.